Hey guys, welcome to Initiate Science Yeah, where science meets you. If you are new to this channel, then do press the subscribe button and also press the bell icon. This video is going to be a little specific, so I warn you this is going to be a long video. But it's surely worth your time so you can start learning right now. So here is a video, the summary on data structures. Yes, I'm posting data structures video after a very long time. So now let's move on with uh, the definition of data structures. Data structures deals with the study of how the data is organized in memory, how efficiently data can be retrieved and manipulated, and possible ways in which different items are logically related. Now let's see the classification of data structures. Data structures can be divided into two main groups, primitive and non-primitive. Primitive deals with int, float, char, and pointer. Non-primitive deals with array, list, and file. So list further has two subdivisions, linear and non-linear. Linear is linked list, stack, queue, and non-linear is tree and graph. Moving on to important terms, as you can see in the screen, Asymptotic notations and performance analysis. Asymptotic notations are big O, big omega and big theta. So big O is the measure of the longest amount of time taken by algorithm to complete execution. Big omega is the measure of least amount of time taken by the algorithm to complete execution and big theta is the measure of longest as well as the least amount of time taken by an algorithm to complete execution. Moving on to performance analysis, we can analyze the performance based on space or time, so space complexity and time complexity. Space complexity can be divided as fixed space requirement or variable space requirement and time complexity, clock and time. Next, memory allocation, if you can see in the screen, static and dynamic. Dynamic has three subdivisions, malloc, calloc, and realloc. So these are used for defining and uh, allocating a specific amount of memory. This is this need not be continuous. Calloc is continuous and then comes realloc, where you can reallocate the memory that is already assigned. So moving on to stack. What is a stack? Stack is an ordered list in which insertions and deletions are made at one end called the top. So it follows LIFO or FILO principle. LIFO stands for last in first out. And we use the pointer called top which would initially be at minus 1 over here. And then there is insertion and deletion at only one end of the stack. So the operations that are possible are push, pop and display. Each of these operations are shown in the data structures playlist. You can refer them for detailed uh, programming instructions the various uses the various uh, applications of such data structures like stack queue link, link list i mentioned in separate videos in the playlist so you can refer them this is just a summary i don't want to elaborate so i'm not showing them all over here next let's move on to queue queue is another data structure so queue is an ordered collection of items from which items may be deleted at one end called the front. That is a front. And then items may be inserted at the other end called the rear over here. So in queue, insertions are possible at the rear and deletions are possible at the front. Okay, now the uh, principle that queue follows is FIFO. That is first in, first out. Similar to the queue that we would be standing in any counter or in a restaurant or anywhere and then types of queues there are basically four types of queues ordinary queue circular queue double-ended queue and priority queue so double-ended queue is nothing but DQ in DQ you have two types of DQs that is input restricted DQ and output restricted DQ next the operations that can be performed in queue are insertion deletion display queue empty and queue full so all these uh, operations are shown in the queue video. You can refer to them. I link them in the i box and I link them. I link the playlist as well. Moving on to link list. What is a link list? Link list is again a data structure which is a collection of zero or more nodes where each node can have some information. So each node in the list has a logical relationship. 
So given a node, we can traverse to other nodes or even find the data of a node. So this is how a node looks like. It will be having an information part and a link part. So a node can have two or more such information collected. Uh, so you can use a structure to depict a node. You can again refer to the video I have posted before. This is just a video that shows the outline or overview of everything that you have studied so far. Moving on to types of linked list. Okay, sorry for the disturbance. Now let's move on with types of linked list. Singly linked list, circular singly linked list, doubly linked list and circular doubly linked list. So these are the main four types of linked list. Let's see how they look. Singly linked list. They have nodes connected and moving forward in only one single direction. The first node is called the head node or the first node and the last node is called the last. And then we have the circular singly linked list. Here the same singly linked list is repeated but the last node can be tra used to traverse to move to the first node as you can see the difference between the two uh, singly linked lists moving on to doubly linked list again we have head and the f uh, first node and then the last node but do you see the difference in the structure of nodes there are two link nodes and only one information node this is because uh, the, di the direction that can be traveled by through using a linked list is two ways this is bidirectional, right? So, so here you have the right link to move towards the right nodes and then the left link to move towards the left nodes. Okay, so here again the first node is called the first or head node and the last node is called the last node. Here you can traverse the link list in two ways, in two directions. Moving on to circular doubly linked list, you can traverse, traverse from the last node to the first node and first node to the last node directly without the intermediate nodes. See the difference? So overall we have four types, singly linked list, circular singly linked list, doubly linked list and circular doubly linked list. Moving on to the operations that can be performed on linked list. Let me adjust. Insertion at front or rear. That is to uh, insert a node at the front to the first uh, node or to the second node. I mean to the last node that is the rear. And then delete a node. Delete the first node or the last node that is a delete at front or rare. Then you can search or display. So moving on. Let's move on to trees. An important topic again. Okay, so what is a tree? A tree is a finite set of one or more nodes that shows parent-child relation such that there is a special node called root node that exists and remaining nodes are partitioned into n greater than or equal to zero disjoint sets. That is like subtrees. Moving on, you need to know a few tree terminologies like I have mentioned. I can mention a few. Root node. Root node is the first node that is written at the top. This node will not be having any parent node. Then child node. Node from parent node. That is parents can have zero or more child nodes. Next, siblings. Child nodes of the same parent. Leaf nodes. Leaf nodes are the nodes which have a degree zero because they are generally the terminal nodes. And then ancestors. What is ancestors? Nodes obtained in the path while moving from a specified node X to the root node. And then moving on to internal nodes and external nodes. Internal nodes are the nodes except the leaf node. And the external node, it is a null link of any node in a tree. Got that? Now let's move on to left subtree and right subtree. Obviously, left subtree is the subtree. That is a collection of nodes that are present below a specific parent node or the root node that is situated to the left the, that is attached as a left child to that parent node. Similarly, a right subtree, the subtree that is attached as a right child to the parent node and which has continuous descendants. Next, level. What is a level? Level is another terminology that is used in trees. Just like the floors that exist in each and every building. So the root node will be having level 0. The next child nodes will be having level 1, level 2, 3, so on till n. 
then moving on we have a term called height height or depth so this is the maximum level of any leaf in a tree and level is nothing but distance of a node from root to be specific next we have the term degree what is degree it is the number of subtrees of a node okay now representation there are basically three types of representation of a normal tree you have a normal tree you can represent it in three other ways that is list representation left child right sibling representation and degree to node representation these representations i have linked it i have linked the video in the watch list i mean in the playlist data structures you can watch them and learn from them if you don't know or you can just revise and recapture with the names that are written here next moving on to types of trees types okay so there exists general tree where there are no constraints and infinite number of children nodes can be there and superset of all trees is a general tree next binary tree at most two children so it can have many variations see here as i mentioned there are types of binary trees since they can have many variations there exist types also binary search tree binary it is an extension of binary tree so the value of left child will uh, always be less than or equal to the value of the node that is the parent node uh, whose values will always be less than or equal to that of the right child node then accurately determine the node position we can use this to determine the node position accurately next is avl trees avl trees are adults and well she landers so they balance dynamically and they have a balancing factor of minus 1 0 or 1 they rotate to balance and it takes o of log n big o the time complexity that i mentioned previously next is the red black trees so these are auto balancing trees and you can search for any element or the node in a uh, time span of o of log n and then the nodes are rotated during insertion and deletion nary trees maximum nodes here would be n into a and the child nodes can vary from 0 to n nodes so this is just a generalized uh, type of trees moving on to types of binary trees strictly binary tree uh, here the child nodes will always be 2 or 0 but the child node should always get filled up from left to the right as you can see here the left child of the root node has two more child nodes and the right child has no uh, child nodes where well, this can be called as a strictly binary tree whereas the reverse of this the mirror image of this cannot be accepted as strictly binary tree um this is because the left child uh, subtree is not complete but the right child has a uh, two child nodes so it forms a subtree next complete binary tree so in complete binary tree the number of child nodes that should compulsorily exist exists is two almost complete bi binary tree so here the child nodes can be either zero or two it can be filled in any direction it is not like strictly binary tree expression binary tree here the parent nodes are operators as you can see plus minus multiplication symbol and then the plus again addition symbol and the operands can be child nodes next tree traversing methods pre order in order post order that is from the parent node to left child to right child in order from left child to node parent node to right and post order is from left child to right child to the parent node so these videos also have posted in the in my channel previously you can go view them next comes the selection trees so a tree data structure that is basically used to select a winner or a loser respectively in a tournament is called the winner tree and the loser tree is overall basically called as selection or tournament trees so here we have two types winner tree and loser tree winner tree is min winner tree and max winner tree there are two types and again in loser tree you have min loser tree and max loser tree if the node if the parent node is having only minimum values then you select minimum values from the child nodes and place it in the next higher top uh, parent node so here if there is 3 and 5 you select 3 here if there is 10 here and 3 here then you select 3 so 3 is the winner so this is min winner 
the same thing is for losers so if you are selecting the min loser tree then as i said 3 and 5 then 3 is minimum so it goes up here this would be the loser in case of max winner tree you you take the same thing same values so in, here you have 3 and 5 in case of 5 you won't select 3 here you select 5 in case of 5 and 10 you select 10 because that is having a much higher value so 10 would be the max winner if you are taking uh, considering a loser tree then this would be the max loser tree okay next let's move on to heaps heaps is a type of binary tree that follows shape and order property shape is nothing but it should be a complete binary tree as i had mentioned over here to child notes compulsorily and then the order would be max or min heap okay now the types are max heap and min heap again so the operations that can be performed on heap are insertion and deletion next max heap here the parent node will be having the greatest value and in min heap the parent node will be having the least value so next we have to move on to graphs so what is a graph a graph is a pair v e where v is a non-empty set and e is a set of unordered pairs of elements taken from set v so here v e i thought of writing again so v is vertex e is edge now moving on the terms are vertex edge and node so here let me circle them properly so here a b c d e f are vertex the line connecting the nodes a b um, a c b d c e c f are nothing but edges okay now the three ways to represent our adjacency matrix adjacency list and adjacency multi list i have given a brief explanation in my video you can refer them and next important topic on the graph is DFS and BFS ka difference. So DFS is depth first search and BFS is breadth first search. It uses stack, DFS uses stack, BFS uses queue. DFS is used to find single source shortest path and BFS is used to traverse through more edges to reach destination vertex from a source. DFS is suitable for searching vertices closer to the source and BFS is suitable for searching vertices away from the source. Next, DFS is not suitable for decision making trees and BFS is most suitable for decision making trees. Now consider this graph A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh, in case of DFS, you would be traversing as A, B, C, D, E, F. A, B, C, D, E, F. In case of BFS, the same graph, you would be traversing it in a different way as A, B, D, then C, E and F. A, B, D, C, E, and F. So that's it for this video. If you want any other videos on any other topics, do let me know in the comment section and also share with your friends. Give a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Watch on for more videos that I would, I would be posting right now after this video. The next slide. Thank you. More detailed written videos are coming in the Java series. Up right from the next video similar to the data structures playlist. So keep watching. Hit the subscribe.